Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the C3 AI webinar series. My name is Jessica, and I will be your moderator for today. In this webinar, we're going to discuss how we're leveraging the C3 Generative AI product suite within the C3 AI ESG application in order to augment the business value to sustainability teams and enterprises overall. If you have any questions, feel free to submit them in the Q&A window in the bottom of your screen, and we will get to them towards the end. Today, I'm so excited to be joined by two of our product managers, um, David Parham and Michael Haynes. And to start off the webinar, I'm going to hand it off to Michael, who's going to be discussing the core C3 generative AI product tech stack and what makes it unique. Um, you may have heard some of this content in previous webinars. Um, and so if not, we've provided a link to to see those webinars below in case you want to deep dive a little bit. And afterwards, we're going to have David introduce the ESG application and demo some examples of how generative AI is embedded within it. Thanks, sir. Thanks for joining us, Michael. And thanks for the introduction, Jessica. Um, so in our last webinar on generative AI, we kind of focused on C3 generative AI as a standalone product. So uh, serving as a knowledge co-pilot uh, for, for reasoning across structured and unstructured data, as well as orchestrating APIs and other tools. Uh, today, we'll focus on generative AI as it applies to a specific domain vertical. So in this case, with the C3 AI ESG application. So at C3, we've had the privilege of working with uh, generative AI technologies for several years now. Um, and in uh, kind of our most recent involvement started in late last year uh, when we were tasked with one of our clients to uh, come up with a an application that could provide a, a Google search like experience across uh, their proprietary enterprise data. And so we kind of took this to the drawing board and applied our domain expertise across uh, our years of, of predictive analytics and applying supervised learning and unsupervised learning techniques uh, as well as deep learning techniques, uh, as well as our experience with natural language processing, reinforcement learning, and kind of some of the new capabilities around generative AI to come up with a system that uniquely solves this complex business problem uh, with a very simple intuitive interface. And so kind of what we arrived at is this simple C3 generative AI product interface with uh, a search bar that allows you to ask questions of your proprietary data and receive answers uh, across that data all presented through an intuitive interface that improves upon some of the uh, architectural issues with just a standard language model um, architecture. So uh, in terms of what uh, what does the standard LLM architecture look like today, you know, you can think of uh, many of you might have used ChatGPT or other services in the past, other language model services in the past. They are trained on these, on these text corpuses, HTML documents, code, uh, and you can have an easy back and forth uh, intuitive chat interface with these documents. However, uh, this standard language model, simple language model architecture has, has several deficiencies and, and for, uh, specifically within the enterprise context. For one, uh, two users might ask the same question and they'll get wildly different responses. So kind of the randomness in the response is, is, a, is a challenge for enterprises who are looking for a reliable source of information across their proprietary data. Uh, next, these language models do not provide traceability. So the language model was trained on a large corpus of text, but when you ask uh, for information out of the language model, it doesn't tell you from where in that training set that information comes from. Uh, so it's hard to trace back uh, the response from the language model to where in the source document that information comes from. Next, these language models were not designed with enterprise access controls in mind. So two users who have very different roles within an organization might have different uh, levels of access that they should have to data. Uh, the language models treats all user, uh, the language model treats all users as equal and, and uh, based off the prompt will not discriminate between one user or the other based off whether they should have access to the information that they're requesting. Um, next, there's, there's well-documented risks of uh, prompts being used to retrain these language models down the road, which risks leakage of proprietary information. And lastly, and, and very importantly, these models are prone to hallucinate. So when uh, the model uh, doesn't know the answer to the question or uh, uh, to, the, to the prompt that, that the user is giving, it will do what it's trained to do, which is to make up the, the answer that it thinks is most likely the correct answer. And in many cases, this is not 
satisfactory for the enterprise use case and quite, can be quite damaging. So we've come up with a kind of unique architecture for see-through generative AI that uh, allows us to improve upon some of these deficiencies of the standard language mar model architecture. And, and kind of key to our product architecture is the separation of the language model itself from the data and information retrieval process. So uh, we allow the language model to, to, to do the tests that it's quite adept at. Uh, one, understanding the semantic intent of, of a user's query, uh, as well as um, structuring information that is provided by the retrieval models back to the end user in plain English in a way that answers uh, the question that they asked. Uh, we rely on the retrieval model uh, to kind of do the actual fetch of, of, of uh, the information uh, across a variety of different structured and unstructured data sources as well as external APIs uh, to answer the question and then that information is passed back to the language model so that it can answer the end user's question in plain English. And what does uh, what is the benefit here? Well, it solves each of these uh, different kind of issues that we see with the standard LLM architecture. We see de deterministic responses. So, so it's given that the answers are rooted in only the data that the end user uh, administrator of the tool has given access to, we get the same answers for, for every user. We have full traceability of, of the sources. So uh, when I ask a question, not only do I get the answer, I also get uh, references to the excerpts and passages within the source document that answers the question and can open the, uh, the original co source content in context. Uh, I also get full enforcement of enterprise access controls. Since we're relying on the retrieval model for the, uh, to surface the, the relevant information, we can access control that the, the underlying data stores to make sure that users are uh, only given access to data that is commensurate with their job responsibilities. Uh, we, we've uh, reduced the, the LLM cause leakage of proprietary information because we're not actually retraining any of the LLMs on uh, proprietary data. Uh, we, since we are kind of segregating the duty of the language model from the retrieval model. And finally, we've, we've solved this problem of, of hallucination. Uh, if, the, if the language model, or sorry, if the system has not been given access to the data required to answer the question, then rather than trying to make something up, the system will uh, say, I don't know, and, and uh, rather than you know, hallucinate and, and make up an answer. So kind of with that, with that context, you know, there's, there's a wide variety of, of applications of this technology to, to the ESG domain, and specifically within the context of the C3 AI ESG application, uh, where C3 Generative AI provides a, a knowledge assistant that can reason across the structured and unstructured ESG data sources and, and provide an enhanced and augmented user experience. So with, with that context, I'll introduce my colleague, David Parham, who will talk, uh, who is a product manager for the ESG application, who will talk further about the uh, uh, generative AI as it applies to uh, ESG. Awesome, <clears throat> thank you, Michael. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I'll just uh, kind of continue to build on what Michael walked us through in explaining how we've taken that technology stack supporting um, those generative AI capabilities and really embedded that in the ESG application to help serve um, the users of this ESG application, which are, of course, sustainability teams within organizations who we think can benefit greatly from uh, some of the capabilities that generative AI can provide. So I'll walk us through how we're thinking about this in the context of uh, the ESG application. And I think to kind of continue to build on the tech stack that, um, that Michael walked us through, um, we really see generative AI as being a, a tremendous accelerant to uh, teams uh, sustainability teams within organizations being able to take advantage of all the different data sources and insights that the ESG application provides. One of the key things about the ESG application is that it's uh, really intended to serve as a data unification layer for sustainability teams. So uh, ESG is obviously a very data heavy um, subject matter and it involves lots of different types of data that we're trying to fuse together. So this includes traditional data sources, um, what you can see on the left-hand side of the slide, which is all the company's uh, ESG performance data. So the company's greenhouse gas emissions, diversity data, supply chain information, that's all relevant to E, S, and G 
uh, performance and reporting. And so all of those data sources are unified through the ESG application. And in addition to that sort of inside out view, we also supplement that with an outside in view where we help you understand how you're being perceived by stakeholders around you as an input to uh, a materiality assessment or prioritization of different ESG issues. So for that, we leverage natural language processing and we look at uh, your stakeholders and what they're publishing and communicating about their evolving ESG priorities to give you insights on what your team needs to focus on, uh, what information needs to be reported to whom, uh, and really ensuring that you have the latest information at your fingertips on um, sentiment around key ESG issues. Now, where generative AI can be so powerful is it allows us to fuse all of these data sources together and make them available to the user through a natural language interface. So exactly what you saw Michael describing through being able to chat, to search, uh, you can very easily access information that we've unified through the application. So you could say, ask questions like, what were my emissions in 2022 and how did those compare to 2021? And the uh, generative AI uh, tech stack will automatically navigate uh, the ESG uh, data model to find you the relevant information and give you context around that information. So we really see this as being a powerful overlay to the, the core ESG application functionality. Um, as a quick reminder for folks who may not be familiar with the ESG application, it's intended to be an end-to-end -end, uh, enterprise solution for sustainability teams. Um, we won't go uh, into a deep dive here on the functionality, but there are prior webinars where we've uh, walked through ESG in its entirety, and I would encourage you to, to look for those if you'd like a deeper dive. But at a high level, um, we really see this as an end-to-end -end solution for corporate sustainability teams to help them uh, uh, focus on a few key areas. Number one, unifying all of this fragmented data into a single application experience. We do that through a technology called ESG Bits which represents all of your data at its most granular level, such that you can slice and dice those data when you want to do analytics or for external reporting. We also do a lot of automation to make sure that as your data comes into the platform, it's being uh, correctly transformed into uh, a sustainability metrics that we want to track, things like scopes one, two, and three emissions. Once we have all that data unified, we can do things uh, to support users in setting goals and tracking progress towards targets, as well as automating uh, reporting by pulling all of those data together, mapping them to common frameworks and standards, and allowing you to produce those external reports uh, quite efficiently and accurately. Um, we also support, as, as we mentioned, uh, this question of materiality with uh, natural language processing and artificial intelligence, and that's through that scanning of external um, of the external uh, environment around your company, looking at what your stakeholders are publishing and helping you understand how ESG priorities may be evolving. And then once we've unified all those data, um, we've supported you in setting goals and targets, we've helped you uh, identify material issues. Uh, the next piece is uh, figuring out how we're gonna achieve those goals and targets that we've set. And that comes through the planning portion of the application where you can set a goal, you can manage and track your progress to those goals, and you can receive recommendations around which projects you should pursue to help you most uh, effectively accomplish those goals. So this is really the end-to-end -end for the application. And how we're thinking about bringing generative AI into the application uh, is through a number of different ways, which we'll, we'll talk about briefly here. Um, one of the first ones is the headache that we just talked about, which is uh, the challenge sustainability teams feel in um, unifying all of their ESG data, which is frequently fragmented, um, it, it can be uh, a, a long process. I think we're in the midst of a sustainability reporting season right now, so many teams are probably feeling this currently, that process of gathering the data you need across the organization, uh, and then obviously finding the data you need when you need it uh, can be quite challenging. Generative AI is a great tool uh, for solving this problem as it really can accelerate your ability to find, analyze, and report the data that you need in a very timely fashion. So by being able to interact with your application uh, and all of the data that have been unified in the application through a very natural language interface um, allows you to really accelerate um, your team's ability to get to the information that you need and get the insights from that data um, that you need to be able to drive performance within your organization. And so we really see this as hopefully helping your team um, focus less on data wrangling and focus a lot more on supporting the business in pursuing and achieving um, those sustainability goals and targets that you've set. Now, there's a few different ways that uh, we're integrating uh, generative AI into the ESG application. The first and, and one of the most exciting is through this enterprise search and chat capability. So, um, so through this, uh, our users are able to um, uh, use natural language queries to ask uh, essentially the application questions and will return the relevant data to you. So that earlier example that I mentioned around asking what my emissions were in a certain year or asking uh, what my uh, top investors are focused on this year compared to last year, 
that can all be accomplished through this enterprise search and chat that allows you to naturally interact with the information that's available to you through the ESG application and underlying data model. Other ways that we're looking at, uh, other ways that we're implementing the technology uh, within the application is through being able to really give you uh, insights quickly based on the information that we're unifying in the application. So as I mentioned, part of the application is designed to, to give our users uh, a sense of how they're being perceived by stakeholders, um, key stakeholders to the organization, investors, customers, employees, business partners, uh, uh, NGOs, really the, the full mix of stakeholders that companies consider um, as being important uh, stakeholders within their, uh, their sustainability strategy. And so Genev AI is a great tool to be able to uh, take that information that we're scanning in the public domain and that we're parsing through natural language processing and produce very natural uh, uh, natural language summaries of that information for you on a daily, weekly, uh, time-frequent basis. So you can log into the application each day and you can see a very simple summary helping you understand over the prior, prior 24 hours, here's new goals that have been announced by some of your competitors, Here's uh, the proxy routing results that um, have come from key investors on issues that are important to your company, and that can all be surfaced to you through natural language. And lastly, um, we uh, support uh, companies in performing risk assessments, which are rigorous ways to determine which issues should be material to my organization. Uh, and we, again, use natural language here to help you get a sense of why certain issues are more or less risky uh, to your company relative to other issues to allow you to very efficiently understand the results of those risk analyses. And I'll talk a little bit more about that one in just a second as we'll do, we'll do a live demo of that feature. But first I wanted to show you um, a, a bit more about that enterprise search and chat capability, which really unlocks a lot of the value uh, that's delivered through the ESJ application by allowing you to very naturally search for relevant information across all of the ESG information that's unified in the application. So we'll see a short demo video of that, and then I'll jump back on and show you a live demo of that automated risk assessment feature. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into the video of uh, that uh, generative AI for ESG. Organizations are managing diverse data sets and complex reporting requirements to meet ambitious ESG commitments. Chief sustainability officers, reporting managers, and analysts find it increasingly complex to navigate large volumes of data across disparate information systems, and find emissions and ESG-related data, identify improvements, and create compliant ESG reports. C3 Generative AI for ESG provides enterprise users with a transformative user experience using a conversational natural language interface to rapidly locate, retrieve, and present all relevant data across an entire corpus of an enterprise's information systems. Using deep learning and generative AI models, C3 Generative AI for ESG understands natural language queries constructed by users and helps users find and rapidly retrieve relevant answers. From a simple query, C3 Generative AI for ESG provides a rich landing zone for users to find relevant results across enterprise and external data, systems, and applications. The results card provides the best AI-inferred answer to the question at hand. Users can read a summary and dive deeper into recommendations for action. Review supplemental information through the feature detailed snippet. Converse with generative AI models and ask follow-up questions in the chat and provide feedback to continuously improve search results. The search results section offers a stack ranked list of relevant application pages, analytical dashboards, and media of all types, such as investor and competitor press releases, policy letters, and sustainability reports. Armed with this information, chief sustainability officers can inform the company's ESG strategy, monitor emerging risks, and proactively keep disclosures and plans in line with stakeholder expectations. In this notional example, a chief sustainability officer using C3 Generative AI for ESG can instantly access information across all enterprise applications, such as health and safety, HR, enterprise resource planning, and others as well as the numerous siloed data sources such as environmental audits, diversity and inclusion programs, energy efficiency programs, and supplier engagement initiatives. An ESG professional may want to ask questions such as, are any of our energy efficiency projects at risk? Or, how are we doing against our CO2 reduction goals? From its single results page, C3 Generative AI for ESG organizes and summarizes information to make it easier for users to find what they are looking for. In this case, C3 Generative AI for ESG provides a summary of the company's CO2 reduction by 2040 plan, including the mitigation measures required to reach the target. AI models provide forecasts of the business-as-usual scenario and calculate the gap to plan at every point in time into the future. 
the user receives a summary response in natural language that provides full context. In addition, C3 Generative AI for ESG automatically presents detailed information about the composition, progress, and financial impact of the plan to date. After reviewing the initial search results, the user has a follow-up question that can immediately continue the chat by asking, how can I get my plan back on track? C3 Generative AI for ESG returns the top AI recommendations to accelerate decision-making, building on the prior interaction. The user can deep dive into specific AI recommendations or review the AI evidence packages. The search results also capture relevant pages from other applications, like Workiva, Ecostructure, Resource Advisor, and SAP, and locate relevant performance and efficiency insights from dashboards such as Sphera, as well as relevant documents of recent policies or management information reports. C3 Generative AI for ESG uses advanced generative AI techniques to help accelerate time to insight. Visit c3.ai slash ESG to learn more. So that was a, a short video uh, that just walked us through a little bit of how um, the generative AI search and chat capability can really help unlock the value of the data that is unified through the ESG application. And now I want to do a live demo of that risk assessment feature, which is another way that we've implemented uh, generative AI within the product that allows you to quickly assess the risk of different ESNG topics and leverage both uh, traditional natural language processing, issue classification, and then applying generative AI on top of those results to produce natural language summaries for the user. So uh, we're gonna jump into uh, this demo and I'll walk us through this here. Uh, so bringing that up now, we can see the uh, dashboard of the ESG application and within the application, we're going to go to the uh, materiality module within the application, and we're going to go to this uh, risk assessment section within this part of the application. So here we can see uh, the different risk assessments that we've performed. These risk assessments help us understand the risk of different ESNG issues to our business. And we can see some information about each of those. So we can see the number of issues we assessed, how many were found to be high risk or areas of opportunity for us. And these are key insights for us. So we'll go ahead and uh, run a new assessment to walk you through this. I'm just gonna uh, copy paste here in the name for the assessment, as well as a short description, and then we'll proceed here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and add all of our current material uh, ESG issues or topics. And those are what we will assess to determine their risks to our business. And then here we can start to specify uh, some interesting information about how we want those risks to be assessed. So we have different channels of risk, uh, things like risks to our revenues, to our assets, um, to our operations, et cetera, um, different uh, factors that affect the likelihood of risks and also categories for opportunities that these issues may represent to us. And we may wanna apply different weights to that in the resulting risk score that these issues receive. So here I'm going to go ahead and set this to uh, a preset uh, weighting that I like. Uh, for each of these categories and that will be applied in the assessment uh, to each of those issues that you just saw. Now here I'm going to attach a corpus of documents that I have uh, pre-prepared uh, for this, but for users they'll be able to attach whatever documents uh, to this assessment that you think are relevant uh, to assessing the risks of these issues, academic papers, um, publications, and so on. So we'll go ahead and run this assessment for this set of documents here and we'll see the results now here. Um, we can see for each of the issues that have been assessed, we can see the level of risk uh, that the AI model has determined, uh, as well as the, uh, the opportunity score that has been developed uh, for each of these based on the model. Um, now, we may want to zoom in on only the high and medium risk and opportunity items, so we can quickly filter down to those four. These are really the key critical issues for our organization. And then we can decompose that risk score into the two elements that we saw before, the impact of each of these, as well as the likelihood. So this gives us a little more context on how these risks have been assessed. Uh, now we can dive into each of these categories and understand each of them in additional depth. And so we'll go to the risk impact first. And here we can see uh, information specific to the first issue in the assessment, greenhouse gas emissions. And we can see this nice AI summary that has been generated for this high risk issue. Uh, by the generative AI large language model. So what's happening here is each of the different channels of risk that we've assessed associated with greenhouse gas emissions, we've looked at all those underlying documents that we uploaded as part of the assessment, and it's pulled out the relevant 
uh, information to this risk from those documents and then produced a natural language summary of those documents for you to read. So we can see across each of these risk channels, what are the key information I need to understand about why greenhouse gas emissions is a high risk for my business. Uh, so this is quite helpful for really understanding the context for why this issue is risky. Now, if we go over to biodiversity, another high risk item, we can see, of course, that the, uh, the text here updates to reflect information that's relevant to biodiversity. Again, that's coming from the large language model. We can see the underlying uh, documents that were cited as uh, contributing to this summary that we can see above. And here we can see the matrix that helps us understand for these different channels of risk, uh, what did the uh, what did the AI determine was uh, the relative risk level across each channel? So for revenue impacts, we see it's relatively low risk. Uh, for asset impacts, uh, we can see that we have a relatively high risk here, and that you can see reflected in the risk assessment uh, selection here. Now, if we disagree with what the AI has said, we can of course adjust that and change this to a medium risk if we think this is better represented as a medium risk. We can also click in and look at the underlying excerpts that the uh, model is baking, basing this uh, risk assessment on. So we may disagree that this represents a high risk passage from this document, uh, indicating that greenhouse gas emissions, or sorry, in this case, biodiversity is a high risk to our business. So we can change that to medium and we can see that that's been updated and that will now be factored into the risk assessment. We also may see that uh, the model may have mislabeled some excerpts, in this case, uh, labeling a excerpt that was focused on uh, diversity and inclusion to biodiversity, and we can mark that as unrelated to this issue. So really a nice uh, interface to be able to uh, dive into these risk assessments and tailor them uh, as appropriate for your company and for your personal expertise and understanding of these different risks, but obviously AI is a huge accelerant to being able to quickly produce these risk assessments. Uh, here we can see uh, information related to the likelihood of this risk, uh, of risks related to greenhouse gas emissions. Again, uh, natural language co summaries coming from the large language model and the assessment criteria down below. And then of course, similar information for understanding opportunities associated with this issue for the business. Obviously a key part of AI is explainability. So we wanna give you the full set of uh, documents here that were loaded as part of this risk assessment and an ability to dive into each, understand how the model extracted different excerpts, how they were labeled and how those were, were assessed uh, along different risk criteria. So here we can see excerpts from this document. We can see the category it was mapped to as well as um, the assessment uh, result here in terms of the risk. So uh, I'll stop the demo here and just offer a couple quick thoughts uh, before going to a short q a in the time that we have remaining um, so here we can see kind of at a high level how we're thinking about generative ai as being really helpful for sustainability teams within organizations and it's really about getting you the information you need as efficiently as possible to help you uh, uh, do your jobs within organizations to drive that sustainable development uh, for companies and that's including things like where should I focus my attention, where am I performing well, where am I performing poorly, where am I falling behind. And so it's with these types of uh, questions and answers that we can surface through this technology that we think we can really support sustainability teams in driving change within their organizations. And with that, I'll uh, pass it back to Jessica for maybe a couple quick uh, questions uh, that we can answer uh, at the top of the hour before wrapping uh, the webinar. So Jessica, back to you. Awesome. Thanks, David. So as a reminder, feel free to add any questions in the Q&A and we'll try to get to a few here. It looks like we already have some. So I wanna direct our first one to Michael. Um, Michael, can you help uh, dive a little deeper into how C3 generative AI brings kind of transparency and interpretability into the outputs that are being provided? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the question. Um, yeah, so, so uh, as I kind of mentioned earlier in the presentation, one of the, the key architectural details of our C3 generative AI application uh, is this segregation between the language model and the retrieval models. So um, what that kind of affords is that uh, we're not using the language model actually as the source of information. We are using the retrieval model as the source of information, which allows us to get kind of granular uh, details about from where the contents of the answer that the language model generates come from. So this gives us full transparency uh, across uh, exactly how the language model arrived at the answer that it arrived at, as well as references to the original sources where that information and that content came from. Awesome. Thanks so much. 
Um, David, maybe we'll end on a quick question I saw for you. What is something that has really excited sustainability executives you've been talking with um, when thinking about these new generative capabilities and bringing them into the ESG application? Sure, I think there's a couple things. One's, one's maybe a relatively simple one and one's maybe a more complex one. I think the simple one is um, <clears throat> there is so much that ESG covers, right? It covers such a wide range of issues and all of those issues are very data-driven for understanding how we're, how we're performing and how we need to respond to stakeholders. So having that information at your fingertips is really powerful for executives. Say that executive is about to jump on an earnings call or is about to be on a panel. Um, having the ability to be briefed and get that information very simply for what we're doing well in sustainability, where we have risks, what our stakeholders are expecting from us, that can be hugely helpful uh, uh, in the moment to make sure that um, leaders within organizations have all the information that they need at their fingertips. I think a, a bit longer term and maybe more in the weeds is that risk assessment piece, which is we're seeing a lot of the regulations, the CSRD in Europe, um, the ISSB standards, et cetera, that are really pointing to rigor around a risk enterprise risk process being applied to sustainability. And so uh, we think that that feature and particularly the generative AI pieces of that can be really helpful um, for companies who are increasing the rigor and starting to apply enterprise risk to how they think about ESG by taking tons of information, you know, lots of different reports, excerpts that we're extracting, and then very simply producing these summaries that are very intuitive for the user to get a sense and understand why certain issues are being suggested as risky to the company based on the underlying evidence and why other ones may not be as risky. So I think both of those offer different ways that we can support uh, leaders and executives within organizations, one being a little quick and timely and one being more rigorous and more of the strategy and planning side of things. Awesome, thank you. This is so exciting. So um, with that, I'm going to kind of close us out. Thank you both, David and Michael, for the great conversation. Um, and just as a reminder, uh, the webinar will be available on demand, and you can have an email with the link later today. If you would like to see more content that we are providing, you can follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube. Um, and if you want to learn more about the pilot program, feel free to request a briefing in the kind of button below, and someone from our team will reach out. With that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks for joining us.